You basically experience what the product manager does for a month. If you have an engineering background, you can become a completely PM. Now, in Europe, it's much more diverse. So, what do you say to that? Does it make a difference in terms of networking? How diverse is your background? <laughs> So hello everyone, today we have Rishabh here and it's an honor to welcome him because he is a student at MIT Business School which is also known as Sloan School of Management, one of the best business school in the world and today we will be getting to learn about how to get in and what are the perks you get by being an MIT student. So hi Rishabh, can you please introduce yourself? Hi hello, very nice to meet you and thank you for having me uh, and more than happy to help you and your uh, viewers help understand how the admission process works and what to expect once you get into MIT. Sure. So, start with your background. So, at which point of time did you know that you should do MBA in college? Like, at which point of time did you know that you should do MBA in college? Great question. So, uh, quick, I want to start by giving a quick background about myself and then I can tell you that my point was uh, It is not a binary point. It is a, uh, you know, it's a flow when you realize that at some point, you know, now is the time to take a step back and really look at what the next step is. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm originally from Delhi. I was born in Delhi um, and uh, grew up in Abu Dhabi uh, in UAE. Uh, came back to Delhi for my undergrad, did my engineering, uh, like a lot of other young Indian males. And uh, I started off in consulting. So I was working at PwC for a couple of years. And then I decided ki I can't do corporate life anymore. I need to take a Break, and I went and started working for a startup incubator in Dubai. It was part of the Google for Startups network. That's where I started getting very close to the startup environment, working very hands-on with some early stage startups back in Dubai, also in the broader Middle East. And I realized that, uh, you know, I have been in this consultant, advisor, mentor kind of a role for far too long. And I want to jump and start getting into more of execution. Okay. Execution and more... Um, and, and it really built upon skills that I have zero experience in, like finance, operations, or even marketing to some extent. Uh, and I was, it was during that process I realized uh, probably I need to go for an MBA. Mm -hmm. um, it was always at the back of my mind, but that really cemented that uh, the challenges I was facing, that uh, I should really um, go and build these skills, build a network that can help me grow. Uh, and that's when I started looking at it. So like, I would say like, 2019 is when I moved to Dubai, 2020 is when I first applied to business school, uh, didn't get in, um, 2021 I applied again, 20, 2020 I applied again and then finally got in and 21 is when I went. Oh, interesting. So you said corporate life was not for you. You thought that you didn't job, nahi karna, right? I wouldn't say that corporate life is not for me. It's just the job I was in. Uh, I felt that my learning had saturated. Uh, I was being more bogged down by a lot of processes, approvals, and like, you know, rule books. And I felt I was not being challenged enough. Mm. So, us part of it is that interesting. Karte hai. Let's get into the startup world. Uh, kuch ko milega. You get to work on new problems, uh, you solve new things. So that was the transition for me. Yeah, it's very relatable because every engineering student or an engineer also feels like this in the corporate world. I saw that you are doing code, once you become a master in a project, after that you don't think that you have saved something for this project. Many people companies switch companies, but why did your decision come to MBA? You said that networking was your goal, but did you, why did you think that networking you are not able to do in the corporate world? That's a fair question. Uh, it was not just about networking, it was also about skill building. Um, I was also concerned about the fact that I had done my engineering, but I have never really worked in finance, operations, marketing. I don't have that skill set. That's one. The second one uh, was key, uh, both in my first job at PwC and my second job while I was working at the startup incubator, I was surrounded by people who had done their MBAs from abroad. And I could see the uh, impact uh, the MBA had on their professional and personal lives. Mm -hmm. Professionally, of course, you get a lot of job opportunities, uh, you get access to networks, and network is very, very important in some jobs that, for example, banking, consulting, uh, even for some other sales, VC, network is really important. Uh, and there's absolutely no question that a business school degree, especially from a good school, can give you access to that network. Uh, so yeah, there was the skill building part, there was a network part, and of course, just like 
building your personality, personal growth, uh, the entire journey that they went through, the, the way they told me, uh, I was really motivated and inspired. And I was like, yeah, sure, let me let me take a plunge and do it. Wow, this is very helpful because this actually, you know, for us who are writing their MBA application, this kind of gives us to think how they can frame their answer of why MBA. It's a very important question for all of the big B schools. Now, getting into big big B schools, you did your engineering from Delhi. Which college was it? Sorry. Uh, Delhi Technological University. Yes. Uh, previously called Delhi College of Engineering. Now, in our mind, there is a notion that, yeah, in schools, I have MIT so many times, I have been to Harvard so many times. Her big B school has majority of the students coming from IITs, NITs and BITs. I have heard this name in their profile. So what do you think helped you get in? And you also chose MIT. Okay, so first I want to answer your question about having profiles coming from IIT, NIT, BITs. I don't necessarily think that... Um, having a engineering or an undergrad degree from these colleges is a sure and certain guarantee of getting into a top business school. I have a number of friends here at MIT and other business schools who did not come from these uh, colleges. So I would say that uh, business schools do look at the overall profile beyond just your undergrad. They look at your GMAT, they look at your work experience, your personal professional lives, and then look at it as a whole while assessing that decision. So if you know, if you don't have a degree from any of these colleges, don't feel demotivated. Uh, there is a lot of um, strength in other parts of your application which you can play to and uh, get into a good business school. I agree to your point, but it's very discouraging to look at every big B school's profile. Oh, 90% students from this college and I'm not one of them. 90% students from consulting. I am an engineering student. So it's very demotivating waiting to like, you know, look at all of those profiles. So how did you convince yourself that you can make it? Uh, to your point, it's very f accurate that a lot of these business schools pick up students who come from consulting and, you know, your traditional profiles, but things are changing now. Even business schools have realized that they want diversity in their cohort. They want to see people who've done something different. So if you look over the past few years, a lot of people, what they do is that they work in consulting for two to three years and then do something else for another two years. This is pretty much what I did. I worked in consulting for two years and then started working for a startup incubator. So having that diversity is uh, good, not just for, if you're looking at it from a business school admission perspective, but even for you professionally. Like the last two years I spent at that incubator, I learned way more than what I had learned the first couple of years in consulting. So keep that in mind, like try and diversify your profile, try and get different types of work experiences. And you never know, you might find an interesting problem to solve, which you might want to do post MBA. Yeah, that's a wonderful point because a student who has only background in engineering mein hai and only software engineering experience, hai, that really doesn't tell the school that all engineering students are coming from Microsoft Google. Se hai. How will they find, how will they be able to differentiate? So differentiate karne ke liye, do you think going into startups is a good idea? That's one way to differentiate. So if you have everyone who's applying from a corporate professional experience, if you have a startup experience, hai, you can show that you've you know, really rolled your sleeves up, got your hands dirty, uh, being scrappy. That's a different experience to add to your profile. There are other ways to differentiate as well. Speak to your strengths. Maybe you're a good uh, violinist. Maybe you travel a lot. Maybe you're a good photographer or a YouTuber like you. Uh, so talk about these, th these things because at the end of the day, schools are looking for personalities. They're not looking for, that's not how it works. You need to show them the overall picture about who you are. Wonderful. Now, let's get to know about why MIT. I'm pretty sure with your background, you must be got, getting accepted to many, many schools. Now, why MIT? Yeah, so uh, that's a good question. Why MIT? Uh, I was choosing between a couple of schools and the decision framework that I used was, ki, yeah, I go back to my goals. Uh, working with these startups in Dubai, I realized ki I want to transition to the tech industry. And uh, because that was my goal, MIT made the most sense. Uh, MIT's network capabilities in tech as a whole is unparalleled. Like the kind of access you get to people in whichever tech industry you want, uh, it's 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 much better than what would what I would get at another business school. So that was one major reason why I chose MIT. 
The other reason was uh, MIT's focus on experiential learning. So a lot of times you hear like, yeah, business school and grad school is like, you come to the class, you do your stuff, you do your problem sets, you do your case studies and it's done. Uh, MIT has a huge focus on experiential learning. So we have a bunch of experiential learning classes called labs action labs, uh, which which basically give you a hands-on experience or whatever skill you're trying to get. For example, we have an analytics lab, we have a finance lab. Uh, we also have labs specific to countries. So if you want to get experience in India, we have an India lab. If you want to get experience in um, Africa or uh, any other emerging market, we have the G lab. So it was this focus on experiential learning and learning by doing uh, mentality that really pulled me towards MIT, different from other business schools. Uh, another thing that I would li I'd like to add to the second part is key academic rigor. Uh, personally, for me, everyone comes in with different priorities to business school. Kuch log over time pass karke chill manna hota hai. I wanted a more wholesome experience. I wanted to learn. So I wanted to choose a program which had that academic rigor. So MIT uh, is known for, uh, for its academic rigor. It's not crazy, but at the same time, it's not like a light program where you can just like uh, get around. And the last reason was uh, the network uh, in Middle East, particularly. So my family is in the Middle East. Uh, long term, if I have to go back, there's a very strong network of MIT. MIT is a good and recognized brand over there. Uh, MIT would probably have opened more doors for me uh, compared to any other business school. So yeah, these are the three reasons I decided to go to MIT. Those reasons are very, definitely very powerful, but I have as a contrary that many MIT students are really, really nerd. In terms of networking, I have reviews pade the online for MIT. It might be for engineering, but some people say in terms of networking, many MIT students down the line 10, 15 years later reply nahi karte as often as HBS and other business schools. Is that true? Um... Well, I don't have enough data to back that, but so far my experience has been positive. Like it's 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 similar to any other um, you know networking activity, right? Like you reach out to ten people and like two people will respond. Sure. It has got nothing to do with uh, MIT people being nerds or uh, not nerds. Um, so I think it's also important to differentiate between MIT and Sloan at this point. Sloan is the business school. MIT is the engineering school. Sloan obviously networking is the bread and butter. You can't deny it. So you know people reach out, tend to respond if you're, you know, if you're, if you're a Sloanie, if you're from a graduating class earlier. Um, uh, I, my response has been, my my, um, my experience has been positive. I, I won't say that, you know, people haven't responded. People have responded genuinely. Wonderful. Now, coming to networking topic, coffee log, jaise aapne ka ki, networking is majority of the reason why people go for MBA. Many sunaki like when you go to Europe, when you go to like other countries, Wahape batch is much more diverse as compared to the US. Uh, like MIT, Harvard, everywhere you see majority of students from USA, India, China. These students are more than the US, but in Europe it's much more diverse. So Apka Sayakana, like does it make difference in terms of networking jitna diverse who background? <laughs> Um, I had the same thought when I was deciding between applying to US schools and Europe schools. Europe schools are very, very diverse. There's no doubt, like 90% of their classes are international. Whereas US, it's around 30 to 40%. Mm -hmm. um, 30 to 40% international and 60-ish percentage is, uh, you know, US nationals, US residents. I would say my experience at Sloan, it doesn't really uh, make a huge difference whether you're 40% of your class is international or 90% because the classroom, especially in the first semester, the, the admissions team, the MBA program committee, they make a concentrated effort to make sure that, you know, aapki jo core team hai, they are represented by diverse nationalities, diverse career backgrounds. So you get that perspective in a small group. Mm. Even the classrooms, uh, the class sections, the way they are divided, uh, not just at MIT, but let's say even at HPS, they divide it in a way that you have people from different nationalities, different backgrounds coming and speaking. So you're learning from these uh, people who come from different backgrounds happens irrespective. Mm -hmm. So my, I, I, I've had friends from different countries over here. I've learned from them. We have cultural functions from different uh, communities. It's it's wonderful. So um, I don't feel in any way that you know, this program is dominated by non-internationals. Or, you know, maybe we should have had more diversity. I think the committee has done a great job in assembling the class. 
आई एग्री वेज वेल मैं भी जब भी एम जाता हूँ आई सी लाइक ऑल काइंड ऑफ कल्चरल फेस्ट वेदर इट्स इंडियन चाइनीज इवन लाइक कंट्रीज जो आपने शायद कभी सुना भी ना हो कम्बोडिया लाइक वेन्जुएला एवरी कंट्री हैज देर ओन कल्चरल फेस्ट एंड दैट मेक्स इट सो डाइवर्स एंड आई डेंट फील लाइक कि आई एम इन यू एस एट दैट पॉइंट आई वॉज लाइक आई एम लाइक आई एम आई एम कनेक्टेड टू स्टूडेंट्स ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड हियर इट फेल्ट अमेजिंग no absolutely hamare uh, i don't know if you heard of this it's called c functions c functions happen every couple of months and uh, every two months one community let's say the indian community will decide to host the c function they'll have like indian food indian dances uh, indian cultural shows as a japan c function hota hai africa c function hota hai so a lot of people come together and it's a cultural extravaganza i would say the diversity here is great not just in the classroom but also in the social circle and um, you enjoy it a lot wow now let me understand aapne bola tha ki in mit the learning is experimental learning right so maine jitna suna hai ki majority of business school has case study based learning like you pick up a case 100 people comment on it and you get a different perspective in mba classroom and you 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 are surprised when you get वन क्वेश्चन के आपको दस पहलू सौ पहलू मिलते हैं यू गेट वेरी फैसिनेटेड बाय दैट सो व्हाट डज एक्सपेरिमेंटल लर्निंग कम्स इट व्हाट मेक्स दैट यूनिक इन टर्म्स ऑफ लर्निंग राइट सो इट्स एक्सपीरियंशियल सॉरी नॉट एक्सपेरिमेंटल सो यू एक्सपीरियंस द द कोर्स और द फंक्शन दैट यू आर लर्निंग बाय यू नो बीइंग दैट एनवायरनमेंट बट आई आंसर योर फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन अराउंड केस स्टडीज सो एमआईटी के अंदर जो हमारी पढ़ाई होती है इट्स अ मिक्स ऑफ केस स्टडीज इट्स अ मिक्स ऑफ लेक्चर्स एंड ऑफ कोर्स दिस एक्सपीरियंशियल लर्निंग सो कुछ कुछ क्लासेस में हमें केसेस दिए जाते हैं उसमें हमें प्रिपेयर करना होता है कुछ क्लासेस में एज अ प्रोजेक्ट यू हैव टू गो आउट देयर यू हैव टू टॉक टू कंपनीज यू हैव टू गेट समथिंग डन फॉर एग्जांपल हमारी एक एनालिटिक्स लैब होती है उसके अंदर आप एक किसी कंपनी के साथ एनालिटिक्स पे एक प्रोजेक्ट करते हो फाइनेंस लैब होती है उस पर आप एक फाइनेंशियल फाइनेंस के प्रोजेक्ट पे काम करते हो कुड बी अ डील सो दैट इज द एक्सपीरियंशियल लर्निंग पार्ट जिसके अंदर बिकॉज यू आर एक्चुअली अप्लाइंग दोस कॉन्सेप्ट्स यू आर एक्चुअली गेटिंग योर हैंड्स डर्टी आई फील द लर्निंग इज मच मच बेटर एंड एनहांस्ड In in terms of experience, मैंने टेक में तो सुना है यू कैन एक्सपीरियंस लाइक प्रैक्टिकली एक एक चीज को कैन यू गिव एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एक्सपीरियंशियल लर्निंग मुझे टेक इंडस्ट्री में तो पता है बट आई डोट नो हाउ इट गोज एन एम बी एल टेक एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ टेक प्रोडक्ट मैनेजमेंट इज अ वेरी शॉर्ट ऑफ्ट करियर फंक्शन एट एम आई टी एंड अदर बिजनेस स्कूल तो हमारे यहाँ देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड इज अ पी एम लैब द प्रोडक्ट मैनेजमेंट लैब वॉट दिस इज इज बेसिकली वन मंथ इंटर्नशिप काइंड ऑफ थिंग दैट हैपन्स ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ द ईयर uh when you are hooked on to a startup and you work as a product manager for a month mm-hmm. so this way someone who is not coming from a pm background can actually experience ki product management hota kya hai how does it actually work how do you interact with engineers how do you do customer interviews and this is something you would have not got had you not done an internship uh-huh. and this is something you could not have learned in a classroom so you basically experience what the product manager does for a month and yeah and learn from it That is mind blowing because मैंने जितना देखा है business schools doesn't help you completely transform your career कोई अगर engineering background से है उसे completely PM बनना now he has to be a PM and put it in their resume in order to like get a job तो वो resume में छपने के लिए experience करना जरूरी है and that's where MIT helps right that's one way that MIT helps but at the end of the day without sugar coating I will say a lot of the effort has to be put in by the student like एक आपने lab कर ली that is fine but आपको interview casing everything it's it's an entire process so you have to go through it on your own the other example i would like to give you is because i just came back from uh, is the global entrepreneurship lab now that's another flagship mit experiential learning lab that's been going on for like 20 years usme kya hota hai you are um, this is basically for people who are interested in entrepreneurship and exploring international markets so you are hooked on to a company or a startup in an emerging market like latin america asia india southeast asia africa and then you go and spend like 3 weeks on site helping them solve a business problem so the project i did recently was uh, in africa and i got to travel to three countries uh, and work with a mit startup over there helping them solve some mobility challenges they were facing that is mind blowing so basically mit gives you all the resources 10 different opportunities in all the areas you just have to grab one and put it in your resume and do it not just grab one grab many and uh, channel all your uh, effort and energy to make sure that you get what you want mm. 
that's what I think MIT becomes unique for business point of view too because I have talked to many students at other colleges and I have never heard something like that that you can just experience any stream of your choice for a month and just do it. These opportunities are much less in other schools. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the other thing that differentiates MIT from uh, other business schools is like um, you can take classes at Harvard. You can take classes at different Harvard schools like Kennedy School, Law School, Business School. So Cambridge you get to network with other business schools. That that I think is great. Uh, or of course, then the, you have the enormous resources that, that the engineering tech school has, the MIT Media Lab, the MIT Engineering School. Um, I once took a course with the Media Lab. It was called AI for Impact. And that course itself had so many networking opportunities. We used to get VCs every week to come and talk to us. So if you had a startup idea, you could pitch to those VCs and, you know, potentially secure funding. So coffee things are where you can, you know, resources are there, you just have to like make use of it. Mind blowing. So that really gives me so much clarity about MIT. Now, my final questions will be about how to get in. So can you please share what mm -hmm. makes the application unique other than GMAT score? Like I think GMAT has to be in 95 percentile. What, what is your perspective on that? What is your perspective on essays? How to just be a unique candidate? Right. So MIT has a slightly different application as compared to other business schools. Like other business schools ask you to write essays. Uh, MIT is a cover letter. That is your substitute for an essay. Iske alawa, you have to record a video of yourself, uh, a one minute video of, you know, who you are and, you know, why do you want to get into MIT and stuff. Um, and, and there's, of course, your resume. Um, Kafi sare components hai. If I can just go one by one, I cover letter ke under, um, it's a 300 page cover letter where you talk about your past experiences. Now, mistake that people usually do is that they started, they start talking about what their goals are, why MIT, yada, yada, yada. But the point is, MIT doesn't want you to write a love letter to them. They <laughs> want you to talk about ki tumne pehle kya kiya hai, tum aage, uh, tum pehle kya kiya hai, and what have you learned from it, and how have you grown as a person. They don't even ask you for your future goals because they know that goals keep changing. People write something and do something That's why they don't even want to get into it. They're like, what have you done before? What have you learned? Tell us about it. So your cover letter should just be about you know, picking up examples, two or three examples of what you've done in the past, what you've accomplished, and how you did it and what you learned. Most important part is the learning because that really defines you as an individual. So that's your cover letter. The second part is your... Um, Video. Now, video is a one minute video, uh, which is, think of it this way. I this video in play It but approach it from that mindset. Everyone should, after seeing that video, come to you and be like, hey, I want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. So how do you show your personality uh, in that one minute video? That is something you need to spend time on. So I wrote a script for the video. Um, things which I wanted to pick and highlight, uh, which are not covered in my resume, which were not covered in my cover letter, could be about my hobbies, uh, it could be about your hobbies or anything of that sort, which is exclusive to you. Uh, try and talk about that and be cheerful, be energetic. Uh, they, want to, they want to select people who will be nice and who will gel into the community. So approach it from that mindset. And back to the resume, got those standard advice like make it more actionable, focus on the numbers, focus on what you did, what was the impact. Yeah, it's the resume is not a job description. Nobody wants to know ki tum kya kar rahe the. Sab dekhna chahte ki tumara accomplishment kya tha, tumne kya achieve kiya. So un cheezon pe focus karna and uh, the overarching advice would be ki aapke pas three cheezen hain apne information dene ke liye. Cover letter hai, ek video hai aur ek resume hai. Use it in a way ki aap information sab mein distribute kar do so that you get maximum information across. So point being ki agar aap resume ke andar kuch numbers dal rahe ho ki maine X percent growth kiya. So wo X number cover letter mein likhne ki zarurat nahi hai because already there on the resume. Use that space to talk about something else. So just being mindful of that uh, and and just overall strategizing ki what is the information that you want to put across. What is so unique about you that you feel the admissions committee should know. Uh, I think that's that's the way to go about it. Wonderful. And, and that's sorry, back to your point again, addressing the GMAT one. Yes. The unfortunate truth is that Indian males are viewed from a different barometer as compared to other applicants. Like, oh. we have to cross the average GMAT. We also have to be like, I don't know, 740, 750, oh. uh, at least for a top business school. 
दैट बींग सेड ऐसा नहीं है कि जिनके कम चाहिए मैट्स है उनको नहीं इंटरव्यू कॉल्स आते हैं आई हैड फ्रेंड्स हु हैव लाइक सेवन टेन सेवन ट्वेंटीज हैव गॉट कॉल्स फ्रॉम हार्वर्ड फ्रॉम वॉटन फ्रॉम एम आई टी इट डजेंट मैटर बट देन जस्ट बींग एट सेवन सेवन फोर्टी सेवन फिफ्टी कैन रियली हेल्प यू क्रॉस दैट बैरियर एंड देन द फोकस इंटायरली कम्स ऑन यर एप्लीकेशन वरना क्या होता है कि देन देन यू हैव टू सॉर्ट ऑफ जस्टिफाई इन अ वे कि आपका जी मैट स्कोर कम क्यों है as compared to other people in this cohort and then you'll have to you know there are other things so the entire focus then becomes about if you're able to cross that barrier then it's all about your application true iska example main share karna chahunga maine kai baar dekha hai for all mit all schools what happens is basically they want a unique candidate right they at the want to the day they want if there is something missing in their pool for example let's say in a pool of 10 students they have engineer they have manager they have consultant they might want to aim for a diverse background they might want someone from healthcare and if you're not one of them that the competition for engineers will increase really high so to outstand gmat is one of the big factor एप्लीकेशन स्कोर Yeah, that is that is something we Indians have to like. Can that is something we Indians have to work on because like, a Indian के लिए verbal में score करना बहुत मुश्किल होता है. We have to practice really hard and put in the work for it. Yeah, it's all about practice, and I would just say that don't get complacent if you get a good GMAT because that is just the beginning. You have to draft a very compelling application and uh, get that message across. It's not enough to have a 770 or a 780 and expect admissions from top business schools. So wow Rishabh thank you so much I got a complete picture of MIT now I personally know that like MIT has much more opportunity as compared to any average school I have talked to students from many business schools like Vanderbilt and uh, Georgetown I got to know that there what what is less and as compared to MIT is ki wahan par maine bachcho se baat ki unhone bhi ye kaha ki career complete switch 360 switch bahut difficult hai ऐसा नहीं कि एम आई टी भी बहुत आसान है बट दे गिव यू मोर रिसोर्स टू मेक इट पॉसिबल अगर आपको थ्री सिक्सटी स्विच अपने करियर में करना है uh, कि हर स्कूल के यूनिक रिसोर्स होते हैं uh, हर स्कूल अलग चीज प्रोवाइड करता है एम आई टी इज गुड एट वन थिंग अदर स्कूल एक और चीज जो हम बहुत ऑफ्टन ओवर लुक कर देते हैं इज द जोग्राफी वन इलेवन विच इज वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट वेन यूर चूजिंग बिजनेस स्कूल अगर आपको वेस्ट कोस्ट पे रहना है आपको अगर आपको वेस्ट कोस्ट पे रहना है यू वुड प्रॉब्ली बी बेटर ऑफ गोइंग टू बर्कले और यू सी एल ए और एनी ऑफ द बेस्ट कोस्ट स्कूल बिकॉज वहाँ पे नेटवर्किंग वहाँ पे जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज आपको मिलना बहुत आसान रहेगा कम्पेयर टू डूइंग ऑन द ईस्ट कोस्ट सो दैट्स वन थिंग टू कीप इन माइंड कि अगर आपको कौन सी जोग्राफी में रहना है मेक अ डिसीजन बेस्ड ऑन दैट एज वेल Perfect. So thank you so much, Rishav. It was wonderful talking to you. I hope this video adds value to many students preparing for MBA as well. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh huh.